extend to and also now you know the question now you can understand why I told you before in every station One is more, more, more. Another is then the, the indicate inside control, control system. Last time I asked you who held the picture. I what's the two function here now? You see, there are two poles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why is it they have two? It's normal. Yeah, and some then, but someone are blinking. 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 Yes. Blinking. yes. Uh, so red. 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 Yes, sir. That means that indicate of the switch machine is not correct or have some problem for the test system. So, which is uh, for the movement? Which, is which one for is for the, the movement? Ah, uh, which for the indicator? This, 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 this for the movement. This one movement. Oh, no, this one. It's a uh, blink. 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 Right. And uh, we pull it back. It's normal. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
class, my name is Joseph. I'll be taking us to be on the passenger information system. So, we have learned previously about the ticketing system, how to buy tickets from the station, how to be able to set the seats, the various seats. We see that we see that things that are done in team description. So, the passenger information system actually on each of our station level, we divide it into four. Yes, only into four parts. We have our display system, we have our broadcasting system, we have our video surveillance system, and we have our clock system. These are all that made up the passenger information system. In terms of our display system, we know the need for us to be seeing what is displayed. Yes, sir. Seeing things, we want to be able to visualize some certain things there. For this, Look at our display system. As every display system works, we have a call switch that links it directly to the OCC because this is at the station level. If I'm going here, I will say this is, for instance, now this is talking about the this is the Lagos station. We have a way of communicating down back to the OCC. Back to the OCC. We have our call switch. Doing the work of that, when it back to the OCC, that is very secure in the cloud, with an emergency backup system for it to send it to the OCC. We have our synchronous counter, as the world goes, synchronous, real time, real time. What you are doing here, you are seeing it in the other house. Eh? <laughs> oh, oh, have say something, John, John. Akala, Akala. It's not coffee. Come here. Ah. Okay. So the synchronous controller with the synchronous LED actually has to display things on real time. And it's happening, the step is showing it. Example of things we need to see on real time is like the movement of the train. Things we are constrained, we are things that real time, example of real time display, it's like our normal television that watch at home, watching football. As it's happening, it is showing at the same time. Say it's synchronous, it's on real time display mode. There are synchronous music to play things we have saved. Just like the normal movie you watch at home. You have already saved it, you are playing it. Example of asynchronous stuff we play in our station is like the adverts. This is what we'll be showing on the display board. We also, where can we find some of our display? We'll find them in the waiting room, we'll find them in the entry and the exit section, we'll find them in the ticketing room. These are places we find our LED display in our station. We have the arrival and departure terminal that actually shows the arrival of the trains and the departure. With that, there will be no need for but to start asking questions on which time will the train coming, will the train move this day, will the train move that day. Everything is already displayed on the board. When the train is coming, where it is going to, what time is it arriving, what time should it leave the station. It will help the passenger to plan and also put a ticket easily. We have our integrated display management terminal. It manages the entire system. Train track it, see there is force. There's always a need for there to be a certain level of force management system, what we call the control, the CSM system. There's always a need for us to for us to relate every information of the entire system that's working back to the CSM. That's the only way it can be maintained and monitored. So that's where the integrated display management terminal comes in. Everything is always linked to an access switch. The access switch connects the entire display system as one single local network. And the access switch connects to the core switch that will connect the entire station. So the core switch connects the entire station as one and send it to OCC. That means each, each single station, each single station, for instance, will have a core switch. We have always have a core switch that will connect it down to the OCC, down to the OCC. An access switch will connect a single unit of communication forming a little bit of local network. For everything to work where we need time, time is key. We need time. Without time, how can there be a re how can there be a synchronized system when there is no when the time is wrong? How can there be an arrival or departure this thing display when the time is wrong. In that case, we actually have a general time that will pick from the GPS, the global positioning system. The GPS from the OCC level already 
the speeds from the GPS, how we make time based. Because as we know, time is different across the entire world. Some countries, the same country may have more different time zone of one hour difference. Example is like USA, that cut across multiple time zone. You are in this place, it's 10 o'clock. You move to the next state, it's 11 o'clock. You move to the last state, it's 9 o'clock. You are gone back. Different time zone in the same country. There's always a need for it to have a single time interface that can synchronize the entire time zone of all the stations. So there will be no difference. So in that case, we have our NTP server. The NTP server picks the time from the GPS system and it shares it with all the stations. So a single NTP server picks it from the OCC level, shares it to all the stations, making them to have a synchronized time system. That is what he said all true. So if the OCC set a timetable, Everybody will have a correct time they watch. There will be no confusion at all to any station. When the train is arriving, when the train is departing. In our display system, as usual, there is this access switch. We have our display that displays the clock for us, full display. There is always a need for us to have an analog slave clock, like the local clock itself, that shows you local time of the people. This system is actually just connecting both the one coming from the OCC and the local clock in one. With that, it's always doing what they call counter check. So always ensure that the, the one OCC is sending and the one is, and the one is that the local clock, they are always in sync. They are always in sync. As we, we also said again that the, the analog sleep clock actually is easily calibrated. So in case there's something wrong with the time matching with the OCC, the OCC first should be able to know that something is wrong and they can also be able to easily set it up make correction. So with that, there's always a need for it to have a, an effective clock system. Because if the clock system is wrong, then the data display becomes off. Even the data surveillance system becomes off as well. The broadcast, everything in the station becomes wrong if the time is wrong. So we need an effective time system. That's the only way we will have the station working as normal. Everything is for the betterment of the passengers to make them more comfortable and to make them more, to make them operate in an easier fashion. We have our broker system. Our broker system, as usual, is related to an access switch. Access switch connects that small local network of the broker system as well. The access switch, we have our network audio controllers, controllers breaking down into six different major parts. Automatic speech, speech. Automatic speech system is also one to play automatically. We have seen the, the interface how we can set automatic switch. Automatic speech from the inter passenger information interface, how we can set it up. We we'll set it what time you should play. We'll go to the system, we we'll record something, and we we'll set it as play by 10 30. By 10 30, you start playing. You get the point of it. So the station can set automatic speech. An example of automatic speech generally uses the uh, our voice call, for instance, now. You are calling someone, the number is not available. The next thing we hear, the number you are calling is not available at the moment. Please try again later. It's an automatic switch already pre recorded. To play whenever the number you are calling is not reaching, you stop after today. In our passenger information system interface, we see that some, some of the waves with automatic speech are only the reason why we need it for a case of delay. When the train is delayed, automatic speech take over, probably like an apologetic speech. They're sorry for the delay in the caravan, you just pick up that way and start telling people to calm them down and apologize for the family to delay that is happening at that point in time. So, we also have our self broadcast. Our self broadcast, when, the, when someone picks up the decided to broadcast to the entire station, it's used to pass information on real time. Just like pick up your, speak, your microphone from the control room, obviously, and speak, and everybody in the station will hear it. So we need to pass motion on real time, what is happening at that very moment. So it is also very important. We have the calling station, there's need for us to be able to want to call ourselves and call our train as well. This is the only reason why we have to call the train system and make communication with the train, movie train. So we have to call the train, the dispatcher, every department can easily communicate with themselves because of a call system. It is only present to ensure that everybody is able to make normal phone call among themselves easily. We also have the CD that CD, as we know, is used for simply storage information and playing it. That's where our songs come in. You go to the station, it's playing songs. It's very entertaining. 
are relaxed with the passengers. We have the monitors, monitor speaker that monitors the air system of the noise detector that is to the top level of noise to relax view to regulate our system to ensure that we are not disturbing the public and everything is going well. Everything here can be controlled by the station, but since they are linked to the UCC, the UCC also have access and also authority level to also what to control and they interfere with everything that is going on here at this point in time. So from the, from the OCC, you can override some playing at the station. From the OCC, you can override the cell broadcast at the station. From the OCC, you can override some things because OCC have more authority at the station level. And OCC is also able to know what exactly the station is saying or what they are playing. You see, we know at this point in time. That is the only way for them to be some level of order and discipline in all the stations. There's a need for an emergency system. We have to know that there's trouble. We have a normal emergency system, as you know. Any, any office normally have a fire alarm if switch with a breaker covering it. Or you can quickly click. You click our fire alarm system, it goes to the fire alarm broadcaster interface, link to the switch, it goes back and it works. The fire, the fire alarm begins to broadcast. Normally it's one, 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 or different, depending on the design system. But no one ever uses that red alarm, like police. So everybody there is a problem. There is a problem. Everybody needs to take cover of each other. There is a problem already. So there is a need for us to have that kind of level of blockers for the sake of emergency or fire outbreak. There is also a need again. The emergency may not just be fire itself. It may be something that is partly hand rubber, hand rubber, hand rubber. Maybe hand smell attacking the station. It's an emergency. You know, fire was there is also an emergency. So in that case, it's a need for us to be able to set an alarm that can ring that something is wrong. Anybody fight for your life or try to survive the codes. The power amplifier detection switch, actually, we have all our speakers that are doing the broadcast. This is simply like the terminal that go for what they have to do. This is the speaker that are doing the broadcast sets in different parts of the station. In the passenger information interface, we have seen how we can select these speakers and assign them names and different listings, assign to them IP address and configure each of the speakers to the different part of the station. So it's in passenger information interface. So these are the speakers. There's a need for an amplifier. But the, the amplifier will be able to amplify the sound that is producing. So the amplifier is what helps us to amplify the sound to make the speaker more audible. Also regulate the level of sound it's produced at this point in time. So this is just the Hardware connection interface of our what our broadcasting system. As we all know, it is still what reliant on what on time. It's reliant on time. Time is also very important to it as well. So we also have our CCTV system or our sub video surveillance system itself. The video surveillance system has all of them also have an access switch that gives the their system as one. Well. From the access switch, we have our video convergence switch that is linked to video access switches. For instance, now, this part can be like the front, the front camera set. All the front cameras connected to a single video access switch, seeing them as one, as there is like a front camera. It can be more than one front camera. This can be probably the platform camera, camera looking at the platform. Viewing at the platform. It can be, it can be multiple camera. There can be camera for the waiting room, camera for the different room, camera for the passages of the entire station, can camera for the exit and entry. So that we, everything is linked to a video access switch. So we are, we are talking about the single switch, you control like this certain aspects of the what the camera is covering. It is the video convergence switch that is able to work to communicate this and knows that this set is for front view. This set is for the platform, controls all the platform. Now the video convergence switch is what convergence, bringing things together, bringing things together. So it's able to bring everything here together and name them, separate them as well. So with this, we have a single video convergence switch able to make that possible. Everything is linked to what coming down to our what our video mattress, our video mattress controller. The video mattress controller is how we select our video what we want to see. What makes it possible? We have our four TV display, four multiple screen TV display, displaying different aspects. 
the video, the video management controller is what makes it possible for me to say, let me see, let me see the front view. For instance, now you click on to see the front view here. On to click on to see the front view here, the video matches controller interprets that what you mean by the front view. The front view means the camera, this IP address, blah 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 blah. You send it to the conventions, the conventions fix it to those cameras there. You pick it up from here. So you see, the, the, the video matches is more like an interface that makes it possible for you to be able to yeah, relate to the cameras there and tell them what you want to see, which point you want to see. Everything we are seeing is recorded. So we have a storage unit that records everything we are doing. The recording unit is very important because only when it's recorded can, can there be a measure of security. If it's not recorded, then it's not, there's no use. There is no use to the video surveillance level, there's no way of recording it. Everything is recorded is also forwarded directly to the OSIS. That way the forwarding server is. It links station level, video listing, storage. To the OCC storage. So the OCC is able to see if the station is showing from the level, they can easily see it at this point in time. As we all know, also the OCC also have a world, an eye of policy and station. So they can easily control the cameras. For the camera we are using is the PTZ cameras. We are able to rotate them, pan them, to change their views and to show what we want to see. The OCC have more eye authority. So they can use, they have more power, let me say, more authority level to control the direction of the camera, what they want to see or not. So this forwarding system is what makes this our local storage to the OCC level storage. The storage system we are using actually, you see our system actually supports on, up to 80 terabytes of memory. That was the support system. Normally, we set such video surveillance storage system to be able to, let me say, to be able to display in one month. After one month, it deletes itself. For the case we are using here, we are actually using the FIFO system. The FIFO system is first in, first out. If it starts today as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, let me say it's full, yeah. Full. Tuesday, Wednesday, full. Thursday, full. Friday, for instance. To start Saturday, it will come here and delete Monday and put Saturday. First in, first out. So it's not Sunday, it comes here and it is Tuesday and put on Sunday. With that, it is never full. The system never runs out of memory. It always automatically creates space for itself. So there's always space in the system. It always creates space for itself to so have more storage. First in, first out. That's what we are using. So everything here is connected to the world, to the OCC. It's linked to the OCC. So the OCC level actually we actually have our interface that does the interpretation of everything. It's what enables this system to understand this system, this station to station. It's what enables the entire system, communication line, to go to function properly. It's more of an interpreter, a medium and doing interpretation of everything going on. So we have our interface, we have our application server. I mentioned this is about the passenger information interface that we use to control them. The application server is simply what hosts that website or that app. They are using to do all this controlling, selling the, selling the tickets, getting website and code them. The official server is what hosts, is what hosts it. So the ticketing and reservation system actually gathers information from the ticketing unit. Talk about the AFC, AFC, automatic, fair, this thing control. It actually how they buy tickets and sell tickets, set put it on rate time. So anything they are doing is linked. To the world, to the system, the firewall isolating it to so ensure that the truth does not come in. CCTV also is linked to the world, to the OCC system. That way, they are able to what to set routes or detect the movement of the train. CCTV system is the one that does the detection using the world in the locking system. The locking system sends to the CCTV CCC sends to the power system. That's how we are able to know the train where it's moving to, where it's going to, even set track for it. We have to do it because of the city system is linked to us. In here we have our master database for storing and our private database connected to the RAID system. The RAID system actually is what's like a communication system of database function. We have our RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. I will go into that data for the sake of time. We have our load balance, load balance that balance the entire, to ensure that there is free 
flow of what communication without any issue, like more error checking to check for any error that's supposed to be to our servers, interface, and our printer. So this is summary of the entire passenger information system. At each single station, having four separate systems connects to our OCC. To our OCC. As of now, actually, only the legal system has the few surveillance.